We're here to talk trees, and there's a lot to talk about with the trees here in Vernon Hills. We're with Public Works Director uh, Dave Brown, and he's got some kind of sad information, actually. You've got information about what's happening with all the trees here in town. Thanks for joining us, Dave. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's, it's been an interesting year, whether it's uh, the June windstorms that knocked down uh, many trees, more in the Deer Path, Gross Point area, or our February record snowfall event. Well, now we're being uh, faced with another natural disaster. Uh, the Department of Agriculture has been uh, within our village, uh, based on a call from our forester, to come out and look at our ash trees. Uh, it has been identified that the emerald ash borer is within the village of Vernon Hills. In fact, from Greg's Landing south to Stone Fence, west to Gross Point, the, tr the emerald ash borer is definitely here. Um, I'll save more of the details for our forester to help us with the specifics of what to look for and how we're approaching it. But uh, we have over 3,600 parkway trees that we need to address that will be infected at some point in time. Well, and let's talk about that. We, we have a lot of ash trees in town, as most newer communities have, because ash has always been a real hardy tree until. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, ash trees were planted after the, the previous Dutch elm disease, and it was a really hardy uh, selection and utilized by landscapers. Uh, specifically, we have uh, not just the 3,600 trees that we need to maintain, but they're on private properties too. So we want to encourage residents to make sure that if they have any questions, they will reach out to our forester. And Ken will not just look at our parkway trees, but he'll give some advice uh, and expertise in terms of private property trees. So feel free to utilize that service. Okay, so like if I have a tree in my yard that something's not looking right after we talk about what we're going to look for, and I, even if I don't know if it's an ash tree, I can call the, the arborist and they can come take a look so we can make sure we have identified where all the infestation is. Absolutely, and, and we do encourage those calls, and, and maybe real simplistic uh, how I can help is uh, uh, in terms of emerald ash borer, uh, you don't have to be a scientist to figure this out. Uh, really, a lot of it is uh, tracked by woodpeckers, and we've got an example right here uh, with a tree that we've got emerald ash borer that what's occurring here is that the woodpeckers are trying to locate the larvae and feed on the larvae. So if you see woodpeckers in the area and you see an extreme amount of holes within that tree, um, that's definitely something you should call our forester and have him take a look at. So uh, the woodpeckers are really trying to get at the larvae. And once you look at uh, an example like this of the tree, you'll be calling the village quicker. It's not like we're going to go out and say, you have this tree residents are going to be able to identify it they're going to see the the beige marks on an ash tree and they're going to call us okay and when when you're what you're seeing here then so this is where the woodpeckers what and these other holes are just where the larva is trying to get out those are the the d-shaped exit holes uh, for the emerald ash borer and uh, there's a lot of different borers that uh, ash trees uh, survive. Uh, emerald ash borer is a whole different uh, uh, management task. Um, th it isn't anything new. Uh, it started in Michigan. It's moved into our area. Other municipalities surrounding the village of Vernon Hills have dealt with that, specifically on the North Shore out to Crystal Lake. So we're going to follow our policy based on the experience of others. So there's some good lessons learned by them and we want to take advantage of uh, what they've been able to, to, to learn. Okay, so right now our thing is to, to keep our eyes open, let you know if we see something, call you if we have a question, and then the plan going forward, we're just going to have to, to take it as it comes as we start going through spring. And that's what Ken can tell us a little more then. A absolutely. And our, our major focus is making sure that these trees are removed where they're not a safety issue that they could potentially fall on someone's home, their car, or a person, their self. So mm -hmm. we're going to be proactive in terms of uh, it, their removal. Okay. So you're saying this is actually, it's they start to, because they're compromised, they start to be a little dangerous. Become dangerous and uh, it, it weakens the structure, it becomes uh, uh, brittle, and it starts uh, parts of it starts falling off. Okay, so well, that's not the best news we've heard, but uh, we'll be vigilant and thanks for taking the time to tell us about it. Thank you.
We are joined by Ken Lohr now. He's the crew chief for the Arborist at the Public Works Department. And uh, thanks for taking the time to talk sure. to us. So more no about this emerald ash mm -hmm. borer. So we're standing here by this tree. So this is kind of typical about what you've been finding then. Yeah, uh, the woodpecker damage is very evident right now this time of the year. Um, they're actually the best way for us right now to, to find emerald ash borer. Um, the, the light patches of bark um, that we're finding that the woodpeckers have exposed, uh, they're, they're actually uh, finding the larva inside the tree and uh, showing us where they're at. So it's, uh, they're in many more trees than what we're finding, but the woodpecker damage is, is key in, okay. in identifying trees. Well, and you said, you told me before we started taping that there are always holes in trees. There's always bores. There, but there's other bores. There's, there's actually, borers yeah, right. there's, there's native bores too. The ash lilac borer, um, which is native to this area, does not do the damage that the emerald ash borer does. Uh, it leaves a little bit larger holes uh, in the bark of the tree. Mm -hmm. um, and they're more of a, uh, a, a larger D-shaped hole mm -hmm. or to more round. And uh, there are other borers as well, native to this area that, that do damage, but not the, to the extent of the emerald ash borer. Okay. They are uh, voracious and they will actually kill the tree where most of the borers uh, around here, the trees, um, what the, the damage that they do doesn't kill the tree. Okay. And, and what, so we're, we're gonna have to look, the easiest way is to watch where the woodpeckers are because to find a larva or to find the actual emerald ash borer, they're, they're, they're harder to spot then. They're harder to spot. I mean, the, that's been the problem with emerald ash borer is it's so hard to detect when there are low populations. Uh, they're in trees that before even the woodpeckers find them. And uh, so they're already in there doing damage. You have several generations possibly before you start seeing the damage and before the trees start to die. So uh, we're doing the best we can, um, but it, it, by this point, it's already spread quite okay. a bit. Well, and when you showed that gallery where where you can see the little snake-like thing under mm -hmm. the uh, under the bark, so that's the kind of thing that the larva is eating away at the tree. Right, they're eating in the cambium tissue of the tree. That's the water conducting tissues of the tree. So the water and nutrients aren't able to flow within the tree. It kills the tree. Once the populations of the uh, insect have devoured enough of the the tree, it just kills the tree, and mm -hmm. the trees die pretty quickly. So that's why we're, uh, the first step, I, I understand there's a plan in the works, but it's not really set yet. No, we, we haven't finalized anything yet, um, but we, we're working on that. Uh, right now we're more identifying mm -hmm. which trees have uh, emerald ash borer in it, where is it uh, throughout the village, and uh, to what extent we're, we're going to be looking into uh, removing mm -hmm. trees. So people, we, we really need everybody's help then because there's a lot of trees in town, there are in yards and everywhere else. Right, yeah, there's a lot. Of, we've got about 3,500 uh, trees on the parkways and there's probably at least that maybe two to three times that on private property ash trees. Okay. So it's good to know we can give you a call we can we can stop in and talk to you guys and you guys will help us out then. Right if you see any signs or symptoms of emerald ash borer you see woodpecker damage or anything please give us a call we'll come out, out uh, inspect the tree and try and identify if it is emerald ash borer. Well, and that's not the most friendly and fun news for an arborist no. to have going on right now. I know you guys, no. that your whole life is taking care of the trees. You are going and doing some other work, too, to take care of the, the, the trees that we're not worried about, the healthy trees. You're doing tree trimming right now. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, right now, uh, there's uh, several areas in the village that uh, we have a contractor in doing some tree trimming, and that's just for our general uh, parkway tree trimming in uh doing general trimming for safety reasons, uh, thinning the trees, the health of the tree, uh, raising the tree over the streets, and over the sidewalks, uh, so we maintain a uh, good clearance. And, uh, well, and how about uh, some information about how you trim? Because I know there's maps on online so you can see where people are trimming, and you always put out the signs too. Right. It's pretty obvious where you're trimming, but you talk about for the health of the tree. You go out and they take specific branches out just to make the tree grow better? Yeah, uh, well, for, first and foremost is safety. So uh, clearance uh, over the over the roadway, over the sidewalk, uh, any dead uh, branches within the tree are removed. And then, you know, just a general thinning, lightly thinning the tree to uh, promote, you know, good health and vigor. Um, and by, by removing smaller tr branches now, um, it promotes, we can kind of train the tree to grow the w areas where we want, okay. up and over the roadway, up and over the sidewalk, so we don't have to remove large limbs or they don't get torn off by, uh, you know, trucks and, and uh, later on. And it's easier to do it now because you can actually see the shape. Now, I, I, and for people at home that have their own trees on their property, I know we try to follow the same things you teach us. Um, I know one time you told, I, I remember when it used to be you'd come and just like, 
chop the whole top of the tree off. People don't do that No, anymore. no. The, the topping of trees is highly discouraged. Uh, we do not do that. Uh, there's a practice that's uh, gone away a long time ago, but still there are some uh, tree companies that will top trees. Uh, it's very unhealthy for the tree. You'll, you'll end up actually causing the tree to, to fall apart sooner okay. and you'll end up removing the tree sooner than later. Okay, so no chopping off the trees at the top. We've learned a right. good tip for today. Yeah. Now some other things I know you guys are very, you're, you're very environmentally conscious. Um, I know we're getting ready to do our own lawns and things like that. I know you guys have t uh, steered away from uh, Phos phosphorus? Yes, phosphorus uh, fertilizers, right. We, we want uh, phosphorus-free fertilizers for the lawns, um, for flower beds or uh, vegetable gardens, that'd be fine. But for the lawns, uh, we've uh, prohibited the use of phosphorus fertilizers. Okay, so watch, and everybody, like all, all of the uh, distributors, Home Depot and those and everybody, they know that too. So you can look at the label, but they, they're very clear on what they're putting out for everybody. Exactly. So. Wonderful. Well, thank you for taking the time. I know you're going to have a busy spring ahead of you. Very, very busy. Yeah. yeah well, we'll be, uh, at some point, we will unfortunately have to remove ash trees and um, just to, the, the, the trees will die and start to fall apart very quickly and there's not much we can do okay, about it. So it's more important to get to them before that happens and then go on and figure out what step two and three and four are later. Exactly. But right now we got to find the trees. So. Right. Okay, thanks. Well, thanks you guys. Uh, thank you. I know you're working hard. I know you guys don't like doing this either. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it hurts us to have to remove trees. Uh, you know, we, we uh, my myself and my crew, we, we love trees. Mm -hmm. We love caring for trees to see this. It's it's very unfortunate and we, we want to, in the future, improve the health of our urban forest. And that's, you know, over time that's going to happen. Okay. Well, thank you. We, th we appreciate your expertise. Remember, give a call if you have a question, if you think you see something, even if you're not sure. We'd rather know exactly. and, and know where the trees are so we can get a handle on this and, uh, and we'll get through it. So thanks for taking the time. Thank you.